Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, County Administrator and Co-host of this program with Chairman Tom Wagner. And we're pleased to see you again. I think it's been a couple of months since we've uh, been here and talked about one of our 19 departments. And today we are very pleased to introduce you to our, I guess not our newest department head anymore because we'll have Todd Rector, our Veteran Service Officer, next month. But today we're very pleased to introduce you to Matt Stripmotter. Welcome, Matt. Thank you. Thank you. Matt started as our Health and Human Services Director in November, so it's just been over four months now. He's hit the ground running, had a lot thrown at him in a short period of time, and and we're very pleased that he's here. So Matt, please begin by just sharing a little bit about your your background, professionally, personally. Okay, well, thank you, thank you. Um, I, I think I would probably start by saying part of me is surprised that I'm even sitting here today. Um, I grew up in the La Crosse area um, and spent about 26, 27 years um, in mostly the county system as contracted uh, provider of service, as a county social worker inside behavioral health programs. Uh, grew up in that area, have uh, four children who are still mostly in college in that area. I have parents in that area um, who are still um, active and then my wife has five sisters in that area. So loved it um, and pretty much thought I was gonna be there for, for most of my career. And um, when I was there, I had about 12 years of experience on, on the direct service side on a variety of different types of services. And then about 15 years now of uh, administrative type experience um, in the county system. Um, and was active in the National Alliance for Mental Illness, active with the County Association Behavioral Health Policy Advisory Committee, active at the state level with the Wisconsin Council of Mental Health. Um, so, uh, had a chance to travel across the state and see other systems and hear about other systems uh, and then saw an application or a job advertisement for the, this position in Sheboygan. Um, actually saw it because my wife said, hey look, that's Sheboygan. She's like, uh, my wife loves to move and loves change. And she said, how about that? Um, knowing that I wasn't somebody who was looking uh, necessarily to be leaving. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been coming to this area for probably 12 to 15 years, uh, fishing with my father, um, and then more recently my daughters uh, in the Sheboygan River for salmon and, and steelhead. So never talking to people, never meeting people, but being here um, and seeing the beautiful area and, and the river. And um, so I took a chance and I took an interview um, met some great people uh, when I had that interview and it felt for the first time in many years like I think it's time for a move. I think it's time to actually pack up and leave what I've known for most of my life and start a new journey which brought me over here. Um, and it's just been great. It's been fantastic from yeah. day one. Well that's wonderful and, and I can assure you we're not surprised you're here because though we had I think we had over 40 candidates for the mm -hmm. Health and Human Services Director position and we have to narrow that down to a half dozen or so and then we hold interviews and that's a very collaborative process and and Matt certainly uh, you just shine during the interview process and your background was so impressive and of course it didn't hurt that you fished and you right. had a feel for the area but uh, we're just very pleased you're here Matt has hit the ground running and he's responsible for the largest department of the 19 the Health and Human Services Department has over a 35 million dollar budget 44 programs a lot going on there so tremendous responsibility and what I wasn't aware of when we hired Matt, but uh, just recently became aware of, he touched on, or you just touched on, you know, some of the things you were involved in, not only locally, but at a statewide mm -hmm. level. And you were recently awarded the Relentless <laughs> Badger Award. The Relentless Badger. And I Badger. thought, how cool is that? Because in Sheboygan County, we pride ourselves on and working in collaboration and helping make good things happen and, and not being afraid to roll up our sleeves and problem solve. And it sounds like you did your share of that in La Crosse County. So we're just real pleased you're here. Yes, thank you. Thank you. So you, you mentioned so far so good. As you've gotten a, a flavor for things here the last four months, what have been some of your impressions of, of, the, of the department and, and the team you're working with? Um, well, before I answer that, what I should have said is that, um, so I've relocated, but I relocated with my wife um, and our dog, Max, um, and our three cats. 
um, and I've just loved the area. Um, a chance to, the outdoor activities, just a chance coming from the La Crosse area. I mean, it's just beautiful and the bluffs and the river it system. Sure is. Coming over here and being minutes away from multiple state parks and the county parks, um, our dog has been exhausted as we take him and, and he sees all the wildlife and everything. Um, so it's just beautiful, beautiful place. Um, so, do you repeat the question? Sure, no problem. <laughs> Impressions of the department, your team, of course, every county is a little different. Uh, what have been some of the impressions that you've formed thus far, you know, okay. of the department, your coworkers, uh, the programs and services that we have here? Okay, so I've, I've had this question many times um, as I've talked to former coworkers or gone back to the La Crosse area or meeting people. So many people have asked me, um, and it is just, um, and not, not making this up for, for today's show, it has been an absolute pleasure. I think I sent you, Adam, uh, the very first day after the interview, um, before I was offered the job, um, sent you a, a message that was like legitimate. It was a pleasure that day to spend like an hour or two um, with people that just felt good, invested, kind, um, I don't know, can't explain it, but felt good. Um, and then since coming here, um, it has just been a warm welcome. Um, 200 or so individuals that I have inside my own department, um, so many friendly faces, so many people welcoming. Um, I had baskets of Sheboygan area manufactured. I had brats and um, plants and all kinds of things just waiting for me. Um, all other department heads, board members, um, just kind and friendly and welcoming um, in a way that just felt real. Um, as I met more and more community players of nonprofits or the school system or law enforcement, um, it's just been one person after the other. I'm sure somebody's got something they're frustrated about and, and is really hoping I'll make a difference, but everybody has just been um, so kind in talking about the history of working with the county, um, the things that have happened that they hope can continue, about how people come together and how we play our part as a county system. Um, it just keeps happening. Um, so it's been wonderful, just wonderful to meet so many different people who all have very favorable impressions of the county and look forward to working together on whatever, uh, on whatever it is. So it's been great. Good, good to hear. Thank you, Matt. Tom. Yeah. Last fall, your predecessor, Tom Agerbrecht, was here, and he talked about the different things that the, um, your agency was involved in with the um, community, et cetera, and challenges that they were facing, which is always the case. Um, do you want to provide a brief overview of your department and the core service areas, and also possibly talk about where the location is of these different okay. Okay, so as mentioned, we have a large department. We are spread out um, across Sheboygan County in multiple areas. Um, we have, well, first I suppose I should uh, try to describe the scope. The scope is difficult. It doesn't really fit neatly into a few sentences, but um, as I think about it when I'm talking with people, we're really responsible as a health and human services for um, planning and then implementing however, a, however, as much of a comprehensive system for safety and community wellness, whatever the community might need to be safe and well and healthy, um, is, a, is a nice general way to look at it. Um, we have child welfare and youth justice services. Um, where individuals are making sure that families and children um, are safe um, and if things need to be provided to help um, guide and hopefully change a path for someone who may not have made good decisions, um, trying to have services in a uh, place that can help those things get better. Um, that's part of our human services building um, at 1011 North 8th in Sheboygan. Also part of that building is our public health and our behavioral health. So public health really is a wide variety of things from uh, communicable, communicable disease control to testing of various water um, and uh, restaurant um, setups to make sure that the community is, is um, not being put at risk, um, to women and infants and children programming, to emergency preparedness as health and human services may be drawn into things like flooding response or other events. How is it that we can do our peace well? Um, a lot of things come out of public health. Again, that's at the 1011 North 8th. Behavioral health is really a continuum. What can we do as a county system for mental health and substance use? 
everything from the emergency level to the long-term care. Um, that's a gigantic world. Um, we don't receive a lot of funding in that world, so we sure, certainly can't meet all the community's needs, but what can we do to fill in gaps that um, other, other entities or nonprofits might not be doing? So again, those were at our 1011 North 8th. We have our Aging and Disability Resource Center and our Elderly Services, which is in Sheboygan Falls at 650 Forest Avenue. Really information and assistance, um, what is it that's available to individuals with disabilities or as they're aging and may need more assistance. Um, free service there to help families plan and, and find out what loved ones might be eligible for. Senior dining programs, um, benefit specialists, um, adult protective services if someone's possibly concerned that someone might be taking advantage of someone um, in a situation due to a disability or aging, then um, staff that can help look into that, make sure that that person's going to be okay. Um, those are at the Sheboygan Falls, the aging and ADRC. Economic support is in Sheboygan, but at 3620 Wilgus Avenue. And that's where we have uh, staff there to help with uh, benefits people might be eligible for, such as food share, Medicaid, energy, heating assistance, um, things like that. Um, very busy, because lots of need out there. And then we also have child support, um, which is at the courthouse at 615 North 6th Street um, with paternity establishment, um, and then enforcing of child support type of orders. Um, so that's just sort of touching the surface. I mean, I think you mentioned 44 services or programs. We could probably define that anywhere from 25 at a high level to 150 perhaps if we really went into details. Um, so much. $35 million is an amazing amount of resources to try to work with uh, to meet a community's need. Um, but with as many people and as many challenges, um, we sure wish it went farther, um, but very grateful to have what we do to work with. That's a lot, obviously. It is. You know, and I think in Wisconsin, you know, other than Milwaukee County, which is set up a little differently with state operations there more, um, the other 71 counties, they really are the arm of the state government and do mm -hmm. so much of this that I don't know if everybody's always aware of that. So thanks for that explanation. I know in, in, in a situation like this, you need skilled employees to mm -hmm. do this. Could you talk a little bit about the type of workforce you hire and how they're involved? Sure. So we have about 200 employees, and it really is a number of different kinds of positions. Um, a lot of it is the professional type, as we do the skilled type of health or human services type of things. We have a lot of social workers, um, a lot of people, case managers with their like bachelor's degrees in various uh, human service related um, programs. Um, lots of nurses, especially in our public health area. Um, up to psychiatrists um, under contract um, and psychologists in our behavioral health area. A lot of administrative um, professionals helping with various call centers and um, um, support and infrastructure roles. We certainly have financial um, type degrees and individuals with the various uh, billing and revenue um, systems that we have to support our operations, so um, quite a lot quite a lot of different kinds of, of individuals working in the system. Right. And I know we're facing, as many all over the state, are facing child welfare challenges <laughs> currently. Could you talk about that a little bit and how we're trying to meet those needs? Yeah, that's very, um, it's not new and it's very concerning. Uh, it's very concerning to me as someone who works in the field. It's concerning with me as someone who lives in a community and has children themselves. Um, in the Sheboygan area, we have about a thousand calls or so per year that someone is concerned that someone might be um, experiencing child abuse and or neglect. Um, that number has been slowly rising over time um, as society or whatever is creating pressures, um, economics, whatever it might be, it seems like there's more and more times we're being called that there are concerns. About half of those that um, happen, we screen out, meaning that something may or may not um, 
be concerning, but it isn't really a health or safety risk for that child or that family. Um, we have some services we will try to connect those people with um, because something probably happened that made somebody else nervous. So we really want to try to help in those situations. But about the other half, something of concern has happened. Um, and, you know, 300, 400, 500, 600 times in a county in a year, that's, that, feels, that feels like something we all wouldn't want. When things happen, we have to decide, um, is it safe for a child to stay with a family situation? And at any given year, recently, we have about 200 or so children that were removed from their family and they're in some other type of situation, perhaps with another family member, but perhaps in a treatment setting or some other setting because of uh, challenges that they're bringing. Um, but 200 people or 200 children in a year not being with family members due to safety concerns. Um, that has to have long-term possible effects for, for, for those children and families that they will have someday. Um, and, and it gets very expensive for a county system. The number has been rising um, over the past 10 or 15 years. Besides the number of cases we respond to, the number of cases with concerns that relate to needing to have a child removed. Um, addiction is one of the main drivers of the increase. 70% um, of the open cases that we are working with um, have addiction that's either driving that referral or complicating that case. Um, it results in cases being more complicated and taking longer to resolve and either have a child go back safely or have a permanent uh, safe situation. Um, the opioids, more and more uh, the methamphetamine use, um, it's, a, it's a player, it's a driver. Um, for more and more of these cases. I believe there was a day not, um, not long ago, a month or two ago, there was a day where law enforcement made multiple raids and we had approximately 14 children that we weren't expecting that needed a safe place to be on one given day. It's not an average day, um, but on one given day to be safe, to find that many places. Um, concerning. Um, what are we trying to do related to those? Um, we obviously have a lot of staff. We have about 24 social workers in that child protection area. Um, once cases have been screened in to be working with families, we have a lot of contracted services to try to bring some skills, um, have supervised visits where parents have a chance to work on those skills, use those skills, demonstrate that um, things can be safe and okay for their families to be together. Um, more and more we're trying to find whatever we can do so the family doesn't get pulled apart um, as long as there's a path uh, for safety. Um, so just this year we had a new grant um, for in-home safety services which was another one or two hundred thousand dollars of service that we're hoping to be able to have inside homes um, to provide whatever level of support a family might need so they don't get pulled apart um, and hopefully can break some of those cycles. I could talk about that for a long time, but I'll take a breath right That's now fine. in case that I, leads for I'm other glad questions. You used the number 200 because when I talk yeah. to people and use that number of 200 children, not being in a, the average person is just kind of shocked yeah. by that number in all honesty. And that used to be more like 40 or 50 going back yeah. 10 or 15 years, and now it's 200. It's yeah. been a slow rise. It's not stopping, and it yeah. probably won't stop no, quickly because no one knows what it will take to stop yeah. it. That, that definitely shocks people. They're just very surprised at that yeah. number. And, and you started to talk about a little bit about the opioid, and I know the meth is in, increasing, and I keep hearing that when I go to different meetings and conferences and so on. Uh, can you talk about what we're attempting to do in Sheboygan County to meet those challenges? Yeah, I've been proud when I came here to see uh, county systems, it's, been, it's very difficult for county systems specifically, in my opinion, to deal with addiction issues. There's a very small amount of dedicated funding from states which are used towards the addictions. Um, counties then need to decide with all the mandates of things you have to do. There's not much you have to do in the addiction area. Um, so a lot of counties really don't put a lot toward that because of the challenges of all the other things. Um, Sheboygan County, it's not like um, we're able to meet the community's needs, but compared to some other counties, um, it feels really good that there's 
a bit more than what we have to do, recognizing how it's a driver of family issues and um, crime in the community and things like that. So we have a pretty solid continuum of services, um, not trying to replace what might be available in the community, um, so many times what a county's role is, is trying to make sure that as much of a continuum can be present, what's missing that others can't do, and then we can try to fill that gap. Um, so we might be doing things like drug treatment courts here. Um, if an individual looks like a good candidate, that their addiction is a large driver of their behavior, then can we treat the addiction if they're willing as a way and give them a bit of a break on the correctional side because that thing that's causing the behavior is truly being addressed. Um, so we have some of those court programs here and they've been expanded through some uh, additional grants we've been able to find. We have uh, an array of group type uh, treatment services um, at the county that people can come to during the days to stay focused on treatment. We have sober living arrangements where if someone has been receiving treatment and needs to stay away from their old patterns, they can for a short term uh, stay for one month, two months, maybe three months, be in a place with others who are focusing on staying away from bad habits, um, just to build some strength in that area. We have some more formal brick and mortar residential treatments we'll contract with for somebody who's really struggling and doesn't have the skills to go get those. Um, it can take people seven attempts at trying to address things like the opioid addiction. Maybe seven times of going to treatment before they're successful, and that may not last a long time. Um, these addictions are very strong, very powerful. Um, and then we have our community case management programs. We can go out into the community and work with people with addictions in a way that hospital systems can't and others can't. Um, there's some designs in the state programs that we offer that allow us to, to get out there with people. Um, if someone's really struggling with addiction and they come into an office for an hour, that's a different person than if you meet them in the community, at a coffee shop, at their home, um, and have the same conversation. You see a different person and you're working on a different set of things. Um, so pretty proud of that continuum. It's not enough, um, but it feels good to have various kinds of things. Um, we do not have waiting lists at the moment. It doesn't mean we don't ha have unlimited capacity. Um, but we are able, when people hear about our services and come asking for them, if they're eligible, we're able to serve them fairly quickly, which feels really good. Right. And you referred to the uh, drug court. And we also have the veterans court. And unfortunately, yes. some of those former servicemen and women are suffering in that area, too. And we attempt to do that. And we're, frankly, we're looking at trying to expand some of those uh, situations within our court system to, uh, to help those people. And, and we'll see how that goes. I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic mm -hmm. on that, so I think we could do it. Any other initiatives that you can uh, see that uh, in 2019 uh, your department is going to be involved in? Yeah, we have uh, some things that's uh, kind of fun and exciting to talk about today. Um, there was a vision. Um, we know that there's a number of children in the area schools that struggle somebody notices that something's going on, maybe behavior changes, maybe grades slip, um, maybe some traumas happen, something's happening and they notice a change and schools are not staffed very heavily to dig into the social dynamics or um, offer treatment. We have a crisis program um, and had a vision this year of a therapist and a social worker that would be available when referrals happen, either from our own system of like child protection or juvenile justice or just from law enforcement or the school, um, asking us, will you come in for one or two months um, with the family's permission, but get to know this child, see if you can help understand why something has happened, if it's related to mental health, what might be they eligible for, providing some treatment in that month or two, but then getting them set up somewhere. Um, so we called that the child assessment team and uh, that began this year um, and there's been nine referrals so far um, and Adam I haven't even shared this but um, the state uh, asked us if we were interested in expanding that they have a grant that they'll be sending us information about that they weren't able to award to anyone yet and so they we may have a chance to make that a little bit stronger um, so that's exciting we also have um, Healthy Sheboygan County 2020 is really a large, it's not just ours as a county. It is 
us trying to facilitate, primarily through the health department, the community looking at wellness as a whole in the community and focusing on various areas. Um, a lot of needs assessment and a lot of planning has been done recently, and new groups were kicking in this year to be looking at things such as where are the weaknesses and access points um, for substance abuse and mental health, um, what else can we do as a community related to addictions in general, but probably opioid or meth in particular, even though there's other addictions as well, just making sure that we're looking at that as a group. So new, new initiatives, new working teams have started. We added a child protection supervisor, um, thanks to the support from our board members this past year. Um, with the complexity of cases and the number of cases, workers face tough decisions um, and need to have adequate access to be able to problem solve and process cases. And we looked a little bit um, weaker in that area than we wanted to, um, to be able to serve the community well. So someone recently, within the past month, started there. And then two more things I'd want to talk about today. One is the in-home safety services. Mentioned that already, but that's a new grant and new contracts to have more services that go in to try to keep families together rather than splitting them apart. Um, that's begun within the last two months. Um, and soon, hopefully in the next month or two, um, one of our previous supervisors, Dale Dieterding, um, who isn't with us anymore, um, unfortunately, um, did a lot of work to look for additional resources for rural transportation, which can be so difficult, um, and was able to secure funding for two more um, minibuses that can serve rural areas. Um, and those are on site and protocols being developed so that hopefully somewhere in April or May um, they can start complementing other transportation services to make things a little bit easier in rural communities to get to. Good for Dale. His work lives on behind yes. his I think That's they were wonderful. talking about perhaps a sticker or a name or something okay. on those That's buses. Well just deserved. To, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Matt. Glad you're here. Adam? Matt, wonderful overview. Covered a lot of ground and, and that 30 minutes flew by, but covered a lot of ground. And uh, again, we're, we're glad you're here. We appreciate that you're, you're feeling good about what you're seeing and the people you're interacting with and a lot going on. And, uh, just to just to sum up in the the last minute we have remaining, you know, tis the season. It's budget season here in Sheboygan County and in the state, and um, the Health and Human Services Department, as as Tom mentioned earlier, most of what we do is state mandated. Yet in many cases there aren't the funds there, adequate funds to really meet the needs of the community. So it's a combination of state funds, county funds. And uh, we do the best we can with the limited resources here. And, and I think our staff at the Health and Human Services Department are second to none. Wonderful, hardworking, caring people doing the best they can to serve this community. I think we're so fortunate in Sheboygan County. So I hope that you got a little bit more of a flavor, appreciation of your Health and Human Services Department, critical safety net services to our community. If you have further questions or suggestions for improvement, or are aware of someone in need or need some help, uh, please reach out, please take action. And Matt, is there a uh, preferred approach that you have for people to reach out if they have a question or concern? Is there a number or the website? Well, we do have the, the website, the Sheboygan County website, definitely as a health and human services area. That's, that works well for people comfortable with technology, are able to give us um, messages through that um, telephone works that's listed on there too and it's listed too all right well thank you so much for joining us as i mentioned next month another new department head todd richter is going to be joining us veteran service officer he's co-located now with the aging and disability resource center which provides wonderful collaboration opportunities so until then thanks for joining us have a good spring and we'll see you soon